to a great deal what we're dealing with in the Bible a lot is an issue of perspective. Um, when a person says, when Jesus says actually in Matthew 5, uh, see 17, 18, 19 here where he says, uh, until heaven and earth pass, not one jot nor one tittle of the law will pass until all is fulfilled. Does this mean that the planet must go away and another planet must come and replace this? When um, the Bible is referring to the end of days, does this mean that there's no more days after a certain day? <laughs> like there's no more Tuesdays? When it refers to the end of time, does it mean that there's no more time? No more 12 o'clocks after this specific time? Um, you know, when it says the end of the world, does it mean that the world must end and another world must come and replace it? These are huge problems, huge, per, huge issues of perspective. You know, um, I, a lot of times I'll quote the prophecy from Isaiah 11 uh, to individuals when I'm talking about end time prophecy. And I'll discuss how it's an issue of perspective. In Isaiah 11, it discusses a wolf lying down with a lamb. Um, it discusses a young children playing with a venomous snakes, uh, even infants playing with venomous snakes, uh, cows hanging out with bears, jaguars hanging out with goats, lions hanging out with ox, you know, eating hay. Um, is this literal reality that we are waiting to be manifested before our eyes? And the answer is either yes or no. Uh, I, I would say no. Uh, this is a this is symbolic language talking about two different things, two things that should not be together dwelling in harmony, uh, which, of course, those two different things from a biblical perspective would be Jew and Gentile, Israelite blood versus Gentile blood being together, being one <laughs> in the Messiah. Uh, it's a fulfilled biblical prophecy. It has nothing to do with animals. Um, but another person looks at it and says, well, it's an unfulfilled biblical prophecy. Uh, this event hasn't happened. A, a wolf is not lying down with a lamb. A wolf would eat a lamb. Uh, we don't realize that that interpretation is a different interpretation than the author intended, uh, different than, than they even understood it in the, in the um, first century. Paul quotes from uh, Isaiah 11, I think in Romans 15. Um, he, he quotes from the prophecy as being even fulfilled in his own days. So... You got to understand that it's an issue of perspective. And uh, I've started kind of coming up with this phrase. It seems that the Hebrew prophets prophecies are entirely fulfilled. What we await is the fulfillment of our own prophecies, uh, which are a, a perversion of their prophecies. Uh, one person is intending a time period to end. Another person is expecting time to end. Uh, one person is expecting specific days to end. Another person is expecting actual days to stop being. Uh, and that's the problem. Uh, that's, that's really the issue. And it's worse than I ever, uh, ever imagined. Uh, because in a lot of ways, it's an entirely different religion. Um, if you are expecting one day uh, that all the animals will be in perfect harmony and you'll be able to, to lead about a venomous snake on a leash or a young child be able to play by the cobra's hole, um, you're envisioning a different prophecy than what the author intended. Unfortunately, um, it, it takes quite a bit to be able to realize that that's not the case. Uh, how many people are being taught Matthew 5, 18 from the standpoint that the sky is here, same sky that Jesus walked under, the ground is beneath us, the very same ground that Jesus walked on, thus the, the heaven and earth has not passed, thus the law is still present. Uh, how many people are being taught from that perspective uh, very flawed perspective, not understanding that heaven and earth is idiomatic, not meaning the actual planet. Um, and therein lies the, uh, the difficulty uh, that lies inside the text. So kind of a quick video, just a couple thoughts I was having here in the morning.